Okay, so uh, today I'll be talking about kind of a more niche topic. It's called field centric drive. And uh, I'm Matthew Lee. Um, I'm 17 years old. I go to Plano West Senior High. And uh, starting this, this year will be my third year in FTC. And um, I'm team captain of Team 18227, Area 52, and I was a programmer before. So, yeah. So, before we understand field centric drive, I first want to talk about uh, robot centric drive, which is what we normally use when we're driving the robot. So, basically, uh, as you can see here, if you point the joystick forward, then the robot will naturally move forward. But it's not actually like absolutely forward, it's forward relative to itself. So if the robot was facing in the right direction, then it would travel in the right direction because that is for, that is forward for the robot. But if the driver was standing right here, then the robot wouldn't be traveling forward in the in the view of the driver. So what field centric drive is is that the robot travels forward in the direction of the driver instead of relative to itself. So as you can see here, if you push the joystick forward, then the robot will travel actually forward, not forward relative to itself. It will travel forward relative to what the driver is seeing. So that's kind of what field centric drive is. It's basically saying that all four of the directions, they're like, or the direction is absolute and it's not relative to the robot. So some of the pros and cons of field centric drive are that, first of all, the pros um, basically, uh, Field centric drive is, um, it doesn't require you to know the heading of the robot, and a robot centric drive does. So when you're driving and you're looking at the field, you need to know which way the robot is oriented in order to drive correctly. But for field centric drive, you don't need this. You can just drive without seeing which direction the robot is facing. And then field centric drive is also a lot more beginner friendly, and it's easier to control the robot right off the bat. It's, uh, instead of robot centric drive, which takes some more getting used to. Uh, really the only con about this is that the like most people that have already used robot centric drive a lot, uh, they think that it's easier and more comfortable because uh, that's what they're used to. But in the end, everything just comes down to what you prefer and what the driver thinks is most comfortable. Uh, so now I'll be showing you basically uh, how to implement it kind of the math behind like how field centric drive works. So we go to here. Okay, so Okay, so uh, let's say I have the robot here and I'm gonna draw a line here to denote that it's facing that direction. So then let's also say that I have uh, the driver right here and that I have the, uh, I'll just, okay, well, here, I'll just use the mouse. It's, it's a little easier. Um, driver centric. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so this is the robot and then Here's the driver, and then here is the gamepad. So uh, let's just draw like a dotted line here to denote that this is zero degrees. And um, let's say that the driver points the joystick in this direction. And then uh, that creates an angle here. Oh, whoops. Uh, that creates an angle here. That's kind of scuffed, but we're just gonna call it theta j. And then, um, so then we also have the robot heading, which is pointing backwards like this. And so normally, if you point the joystick in this kind of upward right direction, the robot would move in this direction. But we actually want it to move in this direction because that's the way that the joystick is facing, actually. So um, then that means that we need to find the angle here which I'll just call it theta. And um, basically this is how much that the robot needs to turn, or it, this is the direction that the robot needs to go relative to itself in order to go in the direction that the joystick is actually facing. So um, if we take this angle right here, which is 
the heading of the robot, and we take this angle right here, which is the heading of the joystick, we can obtain this angle theta by just subtracting the two. Okay, that was bad. And so basically that's the equation that we have, right? And so theta r is the heading of the robot, which is already given to us. So we can just call the method get heading to obtain this angle. But the theta, the angle of the joystick is not given to us. And so this is an angle that we need to find. So to obtain this angle, uh, we're going to use the x and y coordinates of the joystick, which are given to us. So um, if you took geometry, you would know that we can use um, trigonometry to find this angle if we're given the x and y values. So um, yeah, so we're gonna use an inverse tangent function. And uh, here, let me just write it out. which is y over x. But um, we're actually gonna flip this. It's gonna turn into x over y instead because um, zero degrees for the robot is facing upwards instead of to the right. So the opposite side is actually gonna be x and the, the adjacent side is actually gonna be y. And then we're also going to make this negative because on the joystick, the coordinate system looks like this. And um, downwards is the positive right direction, which means upwards is the negative y direction. Mm. And so we need to reverse it and make it negative. And in the end, um, let me just do j. We'll get theta j equals inverse tangent over negative x over y. So yeah, it's a little bit messy, but uh, you can see that that's the joystick angle. So now we can uh, find this angle of theta because we now have both the joystick angle and the heading of the robot. So we just subtract the two and we find it. But we're not done yet because we can't just feed the robot an angle and have it go in that direction. We actually need to feed it x and y values. So if we take... Uh, let me just erase everything. So if we take this equation right here, uh, this is actually the equation for field centric drive. So, um, so this is the equations for field centric, or robot centric drive actually. So this is the right front motor, left back motor, and then we give it the joystick x and y values. So negative x minus y, and then the right back motor equals the left front motor equals the joystick x minus the joystick y. So we can use this equation and replace this x and y with the x and y of the new theta, the new angle that we found. And that will be like the, x, the values that we can feed to the robot in order to implement field centric drive. So how can we find this? Well, um, if we use sine and theta, or I mean sine and cosine, so um, we'll see that we can obtain both the x and the y value. So sine theta is gonna equal negative x over c, and c is the hypotenuse, and then cosine theta is equal gonna equal y over c. Um, oh wait, sorry, this is not negative. This one's negative because y is the one that's flipped and then um, normally this would be y over c this would be x over c but as i said earlier zero de zero degrees is in the up direction and not the right direction so it's going to be the other way around and so when you look at this you may think that um oh wait let me just think of this first this is new the new x and the new y that we're going to be using 
you may notice that we don't have this C and we also don't have the X and Y. So we have two unknowns in the equation. So we're not gonna be able to solve it. But C is actually, it's the hypotenuse, right? So that means it's the magnitude. It's how much power, how much speed we want the robot to have. Do we want it to travel really fast or really slow? This doesn't concern direction at all. And direction is what we're trying to find. So th that means the hypotenuse is going to be the same for both the angle of the joystick and the new angle that we're going to be using. So we can simply just use the Pythagorean theorem for that. And we use the old X and Y values from the joystick to calculate the hypotenuse. So we'll use, um, so C equals uh, the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And these X and Y values are the X and Y values of the joystick, not the new ones. So now that we can calculate C, uh, we just need to take this X new and this Y new and then isolate it and solve for those. So we multiply C on both sides for this one, for these two. And then for this one, you uh, also multiply negative one on both sides. And so that's how you would obtain X and Y new. And then after that, uh, you can just plug in this X new and Y new into this equation right here. And so if we go back to slides, um, you'll see that uh, the final equation down here, uh, it's kind of small so you can't really see it, but right front motor equals left back motor equals negative x nu minus y nu equals uh, negative c sine theta plus c cosine theta. And then you would um, replace c with the square root of x squared plus y squared. Um, and the subscript j means it's the x and y of the joystick. And then this nu means that it's the, um, it's the x and y of the new angle that we found. So this is kind of like a summary of everything I did. Um, we first need to find the angle theta that the robot needs to move relative to itself in order to move in the direction that the joystick is actually pointing. And then we can find that by using theta j minus theta r, which is the joystick angle minus the robot heading. And then uh, step two, we can find the angle of the joystick using an inverse tangent function. And then uh, step three, the heading of R is already given. So using those two, we can find what theta is. And then we take the robot centric drive formulas, and then we replace this X and Y with the new X and Y. So we need first need to find the new X and Y. So we use cosine and sine to find that. And then we also need to find C because we don't know what C is. But C is the same for both the joystick and the new angle that we've done because it's magnitude. And so then, um, uh, we get C and then we solve for X and Y here. And then in the end, we just replace C here with square root of X, X squared plus Y squared. And then we replace um, this X and Y with the X new and Y new to get these two final equations. And so uh, you just need to plug these pretty much into the code and then you'll have field centric drive. So yeah, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Back to the um, to the to the rational the rationale of why you would do this is is field centric is driver centric like video games or is um, field centric like video games? Uh, yeah, driver centric is like video games because because like if you're controlling a character in a video game, the the character would be like the robot, pretty much. So that's driver centric, you say? That's for that's robot, like centric. robot centric. Robot, robot. centric, yeah. So then that, that would be a reason why most people use it right now, just because they're used to game. Oh wait, wait, no, no, no. it would be driver centric because if you have like, if you have a character facing, if you have a character facing to the right, and then you push forward on the joystick, the character would not move to the right, which is forward for the character. It would move forward in the direction that like the, the player sees it. Yeah, so it would be driver centric. It wouldn't driver. be, it would not be character essentially. So it, I mean, that's the real reason why we should go through this long equation. Yes, yes. Implement that to make it better for gamers. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. It's a lot easier to use, uh, right. is what people think, yeah. Yes. Have you ever made the robot FP, like, FPV before? Make it what? FPV. 
FPV. So there was a camera on the robot that came back to the VR goggles that the driver was wearing. No, I not think really I, they see exactly what. The that could be fun to implement. Maybe we could try it in the future. Because I know they do it for RC planes. Yeah. Oh, okay. But no, some teams have. Um, they don't implement it in goggles, but they will have a. They will have it on the. Um, I have seen it show up on the, on the driver. I know at FRC we one team put a camera on the robot and recorded it all the matches. Yes. Okay. Have you ever used it in a competition? No, no, no. I just like basically made this formula over the summer. You made that for me. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, here. What do you mean by that? Like, so, so, so it's you for calculating the the the, the motor uh, powers. So after after you uh, after you're uh, you're done with your coding and, and your that turns your robot heading towards your joystick. Your joystick. Uh, it will not. No, it won't turn the robot. It will like the robot will travel in the direction, but it won't turn. Okay, so that's only the trajectory. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, is it important for you to then, when you're facing the robot down for the first time? Yes, yes, it needs to be facing forward, like exactly, exactly. For, for the driver, yeah. So that's kind of like one of the problems for field-centric drive, because that's implemented in Teleop, right? So at the end of the autonomous period, whichever way your robot's facing, if you have field-centric drive for Teleop, then whichever way your robot's facing at the end of autonomous, is going to be zero degrees. Okay. So, um, do you have an option to set the heading at any time? Uh, set. That would, the that would help, right? So let's say if it is not facing the right way. Yeah. Then you know maybe get it back, pull it, make it ninety degree, and then reset the heading. Um. That would oh, I think yeah, that's definitely implementable, and that's like one of the solutions for the problem that you just mentioned. Um, but yeah, you would just have like a button where if you press it, it would reset the heading to zero, so, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Uh, at a rotational speed, and, uh, you are controlling the robot, so when you use the, uh, the gamepad, you would not only move any direction that uh, the driver wants it to go, but also uh, eventually it's, uh, it's facing the direction. Like, with the, I think your current implementation is to make it a mold. Yeah, but it won't the, be facing it's the still direction. facing the, the, the yes. uh, any yes. other direction, right? So, but if you maybe add some kind of a rotational Yeah, yeah, movement. yeah. So one joystick you would use for movement, and another joystick you would use for turning. Or you could use, uh, like, the side buttons for turning, like, ro like rotating like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, you know, some whether you can add some kind of a rotational speed uh, when you, when you're controlling the motor. Oh, you mean at the same time? Like yeah, at the same time? Like turn and move at the same time. Right. Yeah. So you would just like you. I think you could just use both joysticks at the same time. So you would move one like forward, and and then you would use the other joystick to turn at the same time. Okay. Um, just, uh, what if you just use one uh, one joystick, like just um, because you are trying to make it move in the direction that you want it to move, right? So it would be ideal that you, you can also change the facing of the robot so that it will always point to the uh, direction that you, you want it to move. Uh, you think you probably can do something like that. Anyway, just a comment. It's not a question. Okay. okay.